Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. I'm your host, Eugene Edwards, and we've got another fun episode in store for you all tonight. It's been said that all you need is three chords and the truth. Well, today we're going to focus on, on just three simple chords, G, C, and D, as I displayed there in the intro. These chords are used in countless songs, genres, uh, and more. So today we're going to explore just how much it's possible to get out of this chord combo. Whether you're a beginner or more advanced player, we've got something for you today, and I think you'll be surprised about the possibilities. Uh, helping me out today is our return guest, the indomitable Dr. Molly Miller. Say hello, Molly. Hi, so good to be here. Thanks for having me. It's always good to see you, buddy. Thank you so much. And we also have a little help from our friend, Dylan Calajuri. Dylan? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I love it. Every time he says hi, it's like he doesn't understand the technology. It's great. Oh. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's charming. Dr. Molly Miller is a guitarist who has played with artists like Jason Mraz, uh, the Black Eyed Peas. She's chair of the guitar department at Los Angeles College of Music, and she's a Fender Play Live alum. Aren't you? Yeah. And uh, what do you uh, what do you have uh, there in your hands? What are you playing today? I'm playing a Stratocaster that I bought in sixth grade. It was like the first guitar I got to choose. I bought it from Guitar Center. So it's a, a Stratocaster that I've had for whatever, 15 years. Yeah. Oh, Not tremendous. Can, can we yeah. hear it? Of course. <laughs> Beautiful. Nice intonation. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Dylan, what, what do you have? Oh, well, uh, this is the new Tosh Sultana Stratocaster, the signature. Is that getting in there? Look at That's the headstock. That's getting in there. I know. I love it when the, the custom shop usually mat, would you know match the uh, the body and the headstock there. It's a classic it move. hip. And yeah, it's got gold, gold hardware. hardware. Mm -hmm. It's got now listen uh, listen to the difference between the pickups. Watch. So I'll give you a little sample of the uh, of the neck pickup. <laughs> Now here's the bridge pickup, ready? So that, I didn't change anything on an amp. You, didn't, you saw my hands, right, the whole time. Okay, that's <laughs> a versatile guitar. No pedal switching with the feet or anything, huh? Nothing, nothing, my feet wow. are tied together. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive. Okay, cool. Well, and uh, I'm playing, this is a parts Strat that was assembled in the late 90s, early 2000s maybe. The neck, from what I understand, was supposed to go to a fat cat at the time. The body was supposed to go uh, to a relic Stratocaster. They never did relic the body. It's a mm. two-piece alder. I ended up beating it up over the years. And um, and it's uh, and I'm assuming the pickups are probably just standard American standard pickups. I don't know. We'll... <laughs> Like a bell. Like a bell, right? Like yeah. a bell. Okay, so let's get to it, you guys. If you have questions about our three chords of G, C, and D throughout the show, drop them in the comments, and we'll do our best to get to them. All the songs you'll hear us play today, you can learn on Fender Play after the show, plus many more songs that just use these three chords. I'll, I'll mention some later. Uh, so check out the collection link that's in the description after the show for more help. Now, let's uh, let's kick things off with a little bit of playing here. Uh, Molly, can we hear something using these three chords? I'm thinking like a classic, like... You are my sunshine. Yes. Okay. I'll do that and I'll give you guys kind of the scope of what is possible with these three chords with using just your open chords, playing some melodies, thinking caged and bringing the chords up the neck and improvisation. So I wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. 
Well done, doctor. Okay, so everybody, obviously what you just heard was amazing, but don't worry, we're going to simplify things here and start from the basics. So there's a reason why we chose these three chords to explore today. And it's the same reason why you hear this combination used in so many songs. So Molly and Dylan, uh, what can you tell us about the relationship between these three chords and why they work together? Molly, you first. Yeah, so I mean, I, I don't know if you guys have heard the terms before, like one, four, five um because these chords kind of belong in a chord family and we're talking about the key of g so in the key of g there's a handful of chords that exist in the key of g or seven to be exact but um g c and d exist as the one four and five and they go so well together you can apply that to a bunch of different keys but i like we're focusing in g right now so g is the one c is the four and d is the five chord perfect dylan yeah, well, I'll just expand on that. So for anybody that's just starting out or uh, is new to the theory concept, basically we have seven letter names in the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we shift that bracket over, we have A is one, B is two, C is three, D and so on, right? So if, if G becomes one, we have G, A, B, C, G, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So the relationship stays the same. That's why people prefer the numbers sometimes over the letters because it's it's not key dependent, meaning that number relationship stays the same no matter what your starting letter is or what your starting chord is. Very good, yes, exactly. And you can hear kind of, it's a, it's a very, very common uh, change in, in music. <laughs> When I play that D chord, that five, you expect it to go back to the one chord of G. So um, that's that's kind of the way that sounds. We have a question already, and this is a, kind of a fundamental guitar question, really. Uh, this is from T-Town Scott. Are open chords better for acoustic than electric? Mm. Molly. Yeah, I, I don't. I think everything is kind of circumstance and, and depends mm. what's going on around your environment. You know, because what if you're playing in a band and someone's already playing those open chords? Maybe you shouldn't be playing the open chords and you should play some higher voicings. And we'll get into the show. But yeah, like here's G, C and D with the open. But it might sound cool to pair that with a higher voicing like G, C and, and D. Uh, so I, I would say everything's context and there's no absolutes in guitar. Right. Of course, if you, it's a six string guitar. It's strung this. It's tuned the same way. Feel free to, to mess around. And you're right. It, it may depend on whether you're playing some, with someone else or what the song's uh, calling for. But a lot of people, they prefer to play acoustic guitars down in that open position. It's a little easier and it has a brighter sound. But Lord knows we'll, we'll be using our electric guitars and we'll be playing open chords today. Uh, since this is such a common relationship, uh, the great thing about this simple chord combo is that it's applicable across almost any genre. It fits in what's known as the 12 bar, which is common in blues. Uh, Molly, can you demonstrate that in action with some T-Bone Walker? I'm thinking, oh, Papa ain't salty since it's on Ooh, Fender Play. I can do that. And I'm going to do something that makes me a little uncomfortable. So please bear with me. I'm going to use a looper pedal. Oh, um, cool. Because there's that iconic bass line in the T-Bone, in that tune, Papa ain't salty. <laughs> And I know that's all on Fender Play, so you can check out that bass line. And I'm gonna mm -hmm. do the bass line, and then I'll loop in open chords, and then I'll loop in other caged sort of voicings of like, you know, for example, G, C, and D, just in other locations. So you could hear actually, like if us three were in a room together playing, someone could play the bass line, someone could play those open chords, and someone could play the higher voicings, and then I'm gonna do a quick solo over it. So you can hear all that. So if it was like, if all of us were playing together. Cool, it's a one woman band, hit it Molly. Okay, wish me luck. <laughs> Thank you. 
D. Now to C. Back to the one. Solo. Go. <laughs> well, <laughs> that was so much fun. That went quite that was, well. And Molly, yeah, Doctor, you pulled it off. Oh my God! Don't I know tell anyone how nervous the... I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was very, very cool. That was like Les Paul back in the day when he would do that that trick with his little tape machine. Um, so of course that sounded fantastic, and and um, and I love the way you outlined that. And hopefully, as we do this episode today, uh, hopefully our viewers are going to hear these chords being played over and over again. You get the sound of this one four five relationship, and you'll see us just playing G, C, and D. We'll be getting as much out of it as we can. Um, now, of course, it's used in consul- this. You know, we just heard it in a blue tune but we we hear it in a lot of country music as well um and we have a lot of merle haggard available on fender play so of course i had to pick one of those um working man blues which james burton plays the the lead on that record and it's based on this figure and of course i'm going to do it kind of in this in this first in this this bar position thing and there's this lick it's right he does that over the one chord then he does it over c and d and he forms a blues so it's uh Merle singing. Those working man blues. Oh, and then the five chord. So, of course, this is kind of has that country tone because of the way James Burton plays it, but it's still just that G, C, D relationship. We have a question from Patricia Dominguez. What's your What's your favorite thing about the G chord, Molly? Uh, she's uh, asking you. Okay, I'm going to grab my telly now. I feel like this is a telly moment. Sure. Oh, you and know, what, oh wait, yeah. what telecaster is that? The Ultra. I just got my hands on it. Wow. Is, it's is, fun. Is, is that the Texas T finish? Or do you know? Do we know? That is most certainly the Texas teeth. Nice. All right. Okay. Uh, continue. I'm sorry. The G. You know what? I feel like the the possibilities of these chords are what's so exciting about them. Because with G, like you can just get this big, beautiful. This is a beautiful yeah. chord. But then, like all the things you can do with G too, playing it up and down the neck, soloing with it, and I think that's my favorite thing about it is the the possibilities that exist within one chord. Yeah. You know, uh, I have to say, Patricia, one of my favorite things about the G chord, not that she asked me, but as you say, <laughs> you no, know, no, but in this open position, we have, because of the way the guitar is tuned, we actually have the D, G, and B strings. Those open strings form up a triad that make up that G chord. So yeah. as a country player, we're always trying to steal things from banjo players and stuff like that. So we can kind of do these really kind of wild uh, pull off thing. So I'm pulling off into the open strings and I'm staying inside of a G chord. So I'm kind of, we can really exploit the, that sort of thing there. That's what I like about G chords. Uh, uh, Dylan? Uh, let's see, uh, uh, more banjo stuff. It's, it's probably because so many open chords sit mm-hmm. in the key of G that are also really well uh, voiced open chords and when we're saying voiced over and over again we're referring actually to human voices because that's kind of how we think of the way things are stuck together is in defined alto tenor and bass so right they're yeah good point yeah. Uh, no uh, no we have a question from ken mendez and he's and uh, and ken we're gonna actually answer this question here in the episode it's it, he's asking how many locations on the electric guitar is the g chord so we're actually going to get very, very specific uh, uh, with the answering to that question. So far, we've been exploring how songs utilize G, C, D in the key of G. But the cool thing is these three chords can be played in in, uh, in different keys, so to speak, which which opens up a whole other range of possibilities. Uh, so, so Dylan, can you show us G, C, and D, but in a different key? Hmm. Sure, absolutely. So I've prepared a, a little presentation here. <laughs> of audio one, of it's like you knew I was going to ask you this. See, you know what? So check this out. Right? 
right, so you can hear it's the same three chords, but I don't know if you notice, it's got a completely different timbral starting point, which is it starts on D. And most songs, most songs are in the key of their starting and ending chord. Mm -hmm. Most, most. Uh, and in this case, D is the starting chord, C is the second chord, and G is the third chord. So the, the Fender Play challenge of the episode is, of course, to figure out where those sit in the key of D. So it would be one, seven, and then here's the big question. What's G? Am I allowed to answer? Or No, Molly, Molly, you're the doctor. You answer. Well, we're going to... Oh, or oh. should I not tell them? Is that the homework? The, no, no, don't yeah, tell them. It's that's the Fender Play challenge. We can't. We oh, can't. I they see have to answer it online. See, that's I see. Thing. Now, of course, now Dylan, you're avoiding the tongue twister here. That song you were just playing is on. Fen uh, it's on the Fender Play site. It's "She Sells Sanctuary" by the Cult. She sells. A, I tried to bail you out, but Sanctuary. You know, you, 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 yes, that's what it is. I tried to help him. God. Ah. Okay, Sorry. so this is just a taste of a few songs that that use these chords, but there's literally countless songs that 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 use these three chords. And on the Fender Play site alone, there's songs by. The Rolling Stones, ZZ Top, Johnny Cash, Bing Crosby, Jesus and Mary Chain. So even if you just know these three chords, those are some of the artists that you can cover with these three chords. Check them out on the site. But 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 what if you want to do more? Well, Molly, uh, say that you, you've mastered the G, C, and D open chords. What else can be done with these three chords here, in, like in terms of voicings and yeah, you know, and, and 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 the different positions? I guess we're going to get to uh, to the gentleman's question now. Yeah, I feel like we kind of hinted at. But when you say like how many, there, I mean, it depends. There's so many ways to voice it alone. If you, even just within the cage shapes, you know, we have G. Here's another G. Mm -hmm. Here's another. So I'm walking up the cage shape. The G. The G version of G, the E shape version of G, your D shape version of G, it's kind of like mm -hmm. a D, your C shape, but G chord, A shape, but G chord, and even up here, it's different. Like this mm -hmm. is the same, same notes, an octave up. And so you can do just like comping wise, you can do so much within it. Um, and then soloing the same thing. Like for me, I visualize the guitar with those shape, with those shapes. So I see the shapes moving, um, and I, I use that as a kind of a key point for improvisation as well. Mm. Using those, like you know. Right, you're you're linking one version of a G chord to another, but with, with sliding up on a particular string. Like you're going from from you went from. From uh, this, the E shape at the third fret, and then I you you slid probably up on your D string. Now you're up in this this voicing here, and then you yeah. can do a. And now that's kind of the the A shape version. Yeah, so you're you can kind of link those different caged versions of the G chord. Hopefully this is this is kind of you know and and um, what about well you know <laughs> I know I did about a month ago uh, a holiday technique of the week and I played Frosty the Snowman kind of a surf version Fine. so I played the melody and what I found was easier to play the melody if I played it in the key of G and the chords are G C and D really um, starting in my C shape D. This is the C E shape right when I do that. It's a D, kind of the G shape, but the D chord seven. Yeah. And it's you probably G, C, went. D. Go ahead. Yeah. I was gonna say you probably like went through a bunch of ver voicings of it because it's kind of fun. Even like for you are my sunshine. Mm -hmm. I can play it here. You kind of like see what feels right what sounds right what yeah and that's exactly what happened that's exactly what happened actually I, I thought i was going to do the whole thing out of this shape but then because of just one passage i decided to, to change it real around and you know at the, at the top i played a happy birthday and i made sure i did it in an open shape but so paul Mo molly could i ask you can you play something play, uh, um even if it, it's your my sunshine could you play it in an open chord and then do it in a different voicing just kind of give us a real clear a and b if you will of what it's like yeah. an open voicing and then a, a closed one totally yeah because i did that even in within like the first thing i did i, I played it up here or down here rather mm -hmm. You got all those open strings, all that those good vibrations versus mm -hmm. up here, I'll play like in the A shape. Different timbre, different mm -hmm. vibe. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. The timbre. I guess that. Why is that, Dylan, on the guitar? Technically, that we get that different timbre when we play up the neck. It, it could be a deciding factor on where we decide to play. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, so obviously the octave, wherever it is, um, the string is basically going to like spin at a faster rate, which gives it um, the timbre of the sound is going to be designed by the speed of the string. So, in we tune the guitar at A440. So, if I move up to the next A. Right, and the next mm -hmm. A, and basically by the time I get to that A up there, we've now quadrupled A four forty. So we're at A four million. I don't know math, anyways. <laughs> but but you know, so we've really uh, we've sped up. It's like a humming bee or hummingbird version mm -hmm. versus you know the galloping whatever goes four hundred forty beats per minute. But I want <laughs> you to get the idea. Your that, guess uh, is as good as mine. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing is when it's voiced up the guitar. Uh, just the quality of the guitar is sitting, or excuse mm -hmm. me, the strings being in a smaller fret space and where it's sitting on the neck has a lot to do with how it sounds too. Yeah, I think people, if you if you mess around with your guitar long enough, you'll kind of find those sweet spots as they That's say. Right. You'll, you'll find those. Okay, so let's talk about um, soloing. Uh, I know we always get questions about how do I start to solo? Where do we begin? Mm -hmm. um, so Molly, where, uh, really, I mean, how do we use GCD as a great framework to get our feet wet with solos? Yeah, okay, so, Actually, I think I didn't delete my loop, so I can actually show you guys. I would actually recommend the pentatonic, and tell me if you guys agree with this. Because um, I feel like for the guitar, a good place to start is the pentatonic. And even with these GCD chords, there's kind of two points that you could attack it at. One is the minor pentatonic, and mm -hmm. just like, and that's kind of the more iconic, the the the, the original version of uh, Pop Ain't Salty. It really utilizes the minor pentatonic and just G minor pentatonic over all three of those chords, and it sounds cool and bluesy. And then you could also approach it more with like the G major pentatonic, C major pentatonic, and D major pentatonic, which takes a lot more thinking because you have to like follow the chords as they're switching. Mm -hmm. Do you, would you feel like, do you agree with that? Where there's like two approaches to soloing and you don't have to learn them all over the guitar. You can just start with one position. I, I believe, uh, yeah, I believe in starting with in one position. I, I think especially helps you visualize. I mean, kind of, you can keep track of where you are. Yeah. Um, I also agree, yes, that the minor pentatonic is rather iconic. Um, uh, it, and and as you're probably going to demonstrate with with uh, with the T Bone Walker Blues here, even though the the supporting chord can be a, a G major and a C major and a D major, that G minor pentatonic can be really really effective because of the tension we're going to get. So, could yeah. you demonstrate? Yeah, I'll do that G minor pentatonic over the G major blues because that's where we get the blues. Is that like tension of of these mm -hmm. like the the major and the minor and the blues tone, which is all the, yeah the tension and the release all in one. Right, we, and we we actually kind of discussed this last week. No, oh. yeah, last week with uh, I saw her standing there by the Beatles that you had the major and the minor at the same time. So this will be a great extension of that. Awesome. Okay, so I'll just play G minor pentatonic and I'll just. I won't go all over the guitar. I'll just kind of like hang in one zone so I can show you. Great. You don't need that much to do something that hopefully is at least decent, you know? <laughs> so, okay, here we go. <laughs> You, and you also cross a different rhythm against that that swing and shuffle, so that you get really really creative. And you're right; that was all essentially in one position. Very yeah. very impressive. That's lovely. Um, so uh, we, you use the, the loop, Dylan. Can you demonstrate a bit of of soloing over G, sure. C, and D? Yeah, I think uh, one like it's, it's so cool when Molly plays because you instantly get transported to like uh, the ideas. You can hear hear her do a, like a lot of repetition and kind of uh, come up with an idea and then massage it in different ways that tension and release this song yeah. needs a massage Anyways, <laughs> everyone needs a uh, massage <laughs> so so but one thing you could do is you could take just uh three notes and see how you could voice that differently so we go So I'm really just, I'm doing a hammer on, which is a lesson on Fender play, of course. Uh, but um, you basically just taking three notes and saying, how many different ways can I play these three notes? And if you sang them, da, 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 you'd be able to sing them like 50,000 different ways. 
mm-hmm. and you just try to copy those with the way you're playing. That's what Molly's doing. She's giving you all these different kind of juicy ways to to make the song hip. So. <laughs> You know, I use, uh, you know, if I had to create some sort of background music, or even for a demonstration for a guitar, uh, I'll just take a three chord uh, motif uh, oh. and, and use the shapes like uh, this G. Oh, I'm sorry, different setting. <laughs> that was. Uh, oh, that, oh, more of that I later. Like this. No, nice. uh, this G, this C, this D, and back. But I'll just find one riff that works within each chord. Like. in Bakersfield now, right? And just using G, C, and D. Just finding that one, that one, it's just a basic, it's based on minor minor pentatonic, find that lick and just run it through each chord and cycle that through. And now you've pretty much got the basis of a whole song. Now, I want to make a note, you guys, though, this might seem super advanced, but this is all within just three chords. And we break all of this down further on Fender Play. Start with the open chords, and you'll open up a ton of, 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 of possibilities right there. Just getting those three chords down, and then we're gonna sprinkle all these techniques and these ideas on top of that, and it's all on the site. Um, I think we had a question, but now it's, uh, uh, it's gone. Let's get to the homework, actually. We're actually getting, what? Yeah, uh, Dylan, no come questions. on, no wishes. <laughs> Stop, no wishes. All right, I'm gonna sign the homework because I just feel like it. Um, here's what I want you to do. The, for the beginner, practice switching from G, C, and D. It's the chord challenge. Dylan, can you tell us about that? Oh, I love it. I love it. So if you're on the app, basically all you need to do is go to the more tab, more, and you can get the chord challenge. And so this is going to enable you to work on the variables that are involved with learning how to switch between chords. And those variables are, of course, the chords themselves, G, C, and D in this case, Mm -hmm. but also how long you have to switch in between. So a slow switching time, three, four, and then how long you work on switching it. So let's mm-hmm. say you commit to a two minute switch. Okay, well you can set that. I think that actually might be one of the defaults that you can set. And then you're gonna work with a metronome at say 60 beats per minute. If that's your heart rate, you're a very calm person. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and you're gonna basically just roll with that for two minutes. A two minute commitment these days, guys, that's a pretty big deal. And that means no cat fights, <laughs> nothing. It's got no phones. You gotta stay on this thing for two minutes. That's why the chord challenge is so effective. Now, if me and Molly were gonna learn a Bach cantata, on the guitar, we would actually use these same techniques. We would deliberately work at a small piece of this song Mm -hmm. uh, in in isolation at a slow tempo and then raise it up, adjusting the variables until we could do it. And that's Mm -hmm. why this tool is so freaking fantastic is the term that comes to mind. <laughs> that's the technical term, yeah. That's actually a, a, cl- a clinical term. I'm, I'm allowed to make up one term a day. And that's all just, that's just the beginner homework. That's okay, just the beginner. So, <laughs> so for you intermediates, try G, C, and D using a caged shape. So yes, I want you to, Dylan, explain about you. We want you to learn to open, but then. Right, right, okay. So we want you to learn how to play it open, right? Just, it, let's say you got open down. Okay, now, now it's time for the Fender Play Challenge intermediate style. Mm-hmm. So we've got. Right, or, ooh. <laughs> and you hear that relationship, the, the GCD, uh, it's forming its own melody as you go up the neck there. That's right. In fact, for the advanced, write your own melody over the three chords. Don't forget to use the cage system for inspiration. You just heard Dylan practically write a melody there just by changing the, the, uh, the shapes he was using as he went up to the neck. Now, let's get to the giveaway. Dylan, it's your time, buddy. Hey, so if you guys have watched the show before, you know about this deal, right? We give away something every week. It's the Fender Play giveaway. If you haven't watched before, you're automatically entered to win this giveaway by simply doing three seven-minute sessions with Fender Play, which is called a streak. All right, so the more streaks you get, the more chances you get to win. You get to pick from guitars, amplifiers, uh, might be harmonicas. I'm not sure. There's a lot of stuff in there that you get to pick from. So <laughs> are you guys ready to hear who won this week? Is everybody Absolutely. ready? Yes, yes, yes. Give yes, me yes, yes. a G, C, and D style fanfare, if you would. <laughs> Julie A. Julie A. Not Julie A. That's it. There we go. <laughs> That's right. didn't work. Congratulations, Julie A. Yes, Julie A., congratulations. Uh, enjoy your guitar, bass, amp, whatever it is you choose. Uh, we're, we're very excited for you. Dylan, what else do you have for us? You streak, Julie, so you won. That's it. Mm-hmm. You get it. Okay, now, we've got uh, tons of new stuff on the site. Tons. 
Always checking that more tab, always checking what's new, always. Now, there's a fantastic new song. The producer just told me about it. I, uh, see if you recognize it. Wait a minute. I think I might be playing this wrong. Uh, I don't know if that's the yeah, same version. Yeah, I think I'm playing it. So, it's the kids aren't all right by uh, the offspring but junior high was a tough spot for me and that was my junior high anthem so i think i just went emo with it yeah and I, you um, did i actually saw your your peachy folder like kind of yeah. just like sneaking up behind you there that i had pretty... peach fuzz i had like i couldn't finish the mustache it started here and it wouldn't go all the way anyways oh. junior high rough time and you're even wearing yeah. your 90s flannel i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really got into it. You sold it, buddy. I appreciate it. Thanks, uh, listen, everyone, this is this has been a thin slice of heaven. Huge thank you to Dr. Molly Miller for coming on the show again. Thanks for having me. It always flies by. I blink and it's over. I know. Molly. It's, that's what happens in life, doesn't it? Uh, Molly, tell us what you have going on, because I, I hear you've got something very exciting coming up this week. Yes, I'm so excited to tell everyone. I, uh, I I made a record just over a year ago with my trio with Jennifer Condos and Jay Bellarose, and the first single comes out this Friday. It's called Spry. You can pre-save it and do all those things. Go to yeah. If you go on my Instagram, Moody Mill is my name, or go Moody on my whatever. Mill. Okay. Right. Yeah. If you just find me on the internet, it's there. Mm -hmm. But Friday, Molly Miller trio on all listening platforms. Check I'm jealous. Out. One day, I want you to, to introduce me to Jay. I've always wanted to meet him. Oh, my God. Tremendous. Jay's tremendous. Wonderful. He's uh, really, yeah. great drummer. Molly, yeah. uh, I hate to put you on the spot, but could you play Do a little it. sample of something that, that's, that'll Ooh. be available on Friday? I mean, well, just okay, some yeah. sort of... I'll just do the intro. Okay. I'll give you a song. I'll do the work? intro yeah, sure. of the song. Love it. Oh, without distortion. Well, now I feel like I should do something more exciting like the solo, but we're running out of time. You just... That's how the intro goes. Ooh, and then it gets way crazier and very exciting and emotional and it's all a the things. Like wow. It. Yeah. Yeah. That, that'll suit Dylan's mood because he's he's back in junior high now. I was in junior we high lost the whole time. I never yeah. left. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations with that, Molly. It's very, very exciting. And uh, to everyone else, please keep safe, keep practicing, and we'll see you here next week at the same time and same place. Everybody, let's play out on a G chord, and I'll give you some shimmering harmonics here. Ready? One, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you.